Hey, how's it going everyone? This is I Am Error, and I'm back with another tutorial on how to game dev within Unity. This tutorial is going to be pretty specific, and will teach you how to position objects on your player, such as different weapons you might equip on your player, and then have them integrate with whatever animations you currently have set up on that character, so that you can have your player still holding an object like a weapon, with realistic looking animations. Full disclosure, the solution that I'm going to provide in this video requires that your character be rigged with some sort of IK Manager solution as well. And if you don't already have a rigged character, then you can use the one that I made for a previous video I uploaded to YouTube. There's a link to that video in the description, or you can click on the recommended video at the top of this screen now. So just to clarify again, if you don't have a fully rigged character that you can use, then this tutorial provides no benefit to your project. In order to use this solution, you need to have a fully rigged character with IK set up. Assuming you meet that prerequisite, let's go ahead and get started with this video. The scene I have currently set up is pretty basic. It contains a main camera with all the default settings, and the main camera does have a camera follow script, so that the player remains within the camera view at all times. I'm not going to go over the main camera script because it's not necessary for this solution. However, I did include it as a downloadable script that you can use. And there's a link to my GitHub page that'll contain every script used in this tutorial within the description of this video. If you need some time to download those scripts, go ahead and pause the video here. Or you can type out the scripts yourself as I discuss how they work within this video. I'm also only going to discuss the scripts that I haven't already covered in other videos, aside from the camera follow script that I just mentioned. Now back to the scene. I also have a ground platform game object that only has a sprite renderer component with the image of a square, as well as a standard box collider 2D component. And then I have the 2D character that I made for a previous video. The 2D character has a standard capsule collider, as well as a standard rigid body 2D component, with the only change under the constraints tab to freeze the Z rotation. I'm not going to go over the character, horizontal movement, or jump scripts. All of those scripts are discussed in a previous video that I already uploaded to YouTube. And if you want to check out that video, there's a link to that tutorial in the description. Or you can click on the suggested video at the top of the screen now. So let's go ahead and take a look at this new handle weapon script. First and foremost, I tried to make this as modular as I could. So if you do have a fully rigged character that you made outside of any tutorials that I've uploaded to YouTube, I want to first quickly go over the differences between this script and all the other tutorials I've already uploaded, just so I can reassure those who are using this script as a standalone solution that I made this script for those like you in mind. The first thing you'll notice is this script inherits from character, and what the character script is doing for this solution is it's setting a reference for the animator component found on the player. So if you're using this as a standalone solution, go ahead and have your script inherit from mono behavior and not character, then remove the comment marks for the pseudocode, and simply delete the initialization method that I've typed out for this solution. For everybody else who will be using some sort of character script that this would inherit from, go ahead and have this script inherit from whatever that script might be named if it's not character. Now let me go ahead and get started on explaining this script from top to bottom. We have four public variables and two private variables, and these public variables will not be accessed by any other script outside of this one. So if you want to go ahead and make them serialized field private or protected variables, go right ahead if you know what that means. But we definitely want to set up these four public variables within the inspector window, and let me briefly explain what each of these variables are going to do. The first public transform variable named weapon hand will be the central position in which the weapon should rest within the dominant hand of the player, and this will be the root position of the weapon, so that as the player moves and rotates, the weapon will go ahead and move and rotate around this point. The next public transform variable weapon rotation will be the root rotation point for the weapon, and allow easy access to a quaternion value that the dominant hand would have, so that as the dominant hand rotates, then the weapon will rotate in the same degrees. Next, we have a public transform variable named offhand IK, and this will manage placing the offhand on the weapon in an appropriate place based on a value that we'll go ahead and add to a weapon script for each different weapon that the player would be able to equip. The last public variable is going to be a list of objects that contain a weapon script. And for this tutorial, we'll go ahead and just set up all the different weapons through the inspector. But in a real game, this value would be managed by an inventory manager system where the inventory manager solution would handle all the different types of weapons the player can equip. And then we receive whatever information is going to be the current weapon through that inventory system. For this tutorial, I've included a very light weapon management system that'll allow you to cycle through the different weapons that you set up through the inspector window. The next variable is going to be a private array of weapon objects named current weapons. And the reason we have this array is because we need a reference to whatever objects in the scene have a weapon script attached to them so that when we need to, we can cycle through the different weapons and then assign the current weapon. On that note, we have a private game object variable named current weapon. And this game object variable will be a quick reference to whatever weapon is currently attached to the player. 
this last variable that I have for animator that's commented out is already set up through my character script and is there for anybody who's watching this tutorial and wants to use this as a standalone solution. So if your handle weapon script is going to inherit from another script like the character script that would reference the animator component, then you don't need to worry about this private animator variable. Let's scroll down to the initialization method. The initialization method is set up through the character script. It'll act as a start method for any script that inherits from character. And as you can see, the commented out code within the start method and the initialization method is basically the same. The only difference is the commented out start method sets up the reference variable for the animator component, while the initialization method doesn't have that line of code, but instead has this base dot initialization line that simply ensures any other reference variable found within the character script can be accessed by this one. And what both the commented out start method and initialization method are doing on top of that is it'll first check to see how many different weapons weapon types we have in that list of weapons, and then for each of those different weapon types it's going to go ahead and instantiate one into the scene, and then from there we want to fill up the array of current weapons with all the different objects in the scene that have the weapon script on them, and we do this because we need a reference of the game object within the scene itself. And the main difference between the list and the array is the list is going to contain an instance of the game object, and this instance is going to be a reference of the prefab found within the project window, whereas the current weapons array is going to be a reference of the game object within the hierarchy window, and not a reference to the prefab found within the project window. We then run another for each loop to find all the objects in the scene that have a weapon script on them, and then we set all these different weapons as child game objects of the player, as well as immediately set them to inactive within the scene, and we do this so that we can manage the different weapons and only see whichever weapon is currently equipped. After that, we run the change weapon method, which I'm going to cover in detail later this video, but real quickly, this change weapon method is just going to cycle through the different weapons in the weapon array and make the current weapon whatever weapon is next in line. Underneath the initialization method, we run the update method, and all the update method is doing is running a method called manage input, which is simply going to check for input detection and determine if a button has been pressed down so we can change weapons. We also run a late update method, and this late update method is running a method called manage placement, I'll go over this manage placement method in more detail in just a little bit, but this method will handle placing the weapon and offhand in the appropriate positions. Next we have the manage input method and it's pretty basic. This method is simply going to check to see if the R key is pressed down, and whenever the R key is pressed it'll go ahead and run the change weapon method. Now of course if you don't want the R key to change the weapons, you can change this input detection to whatever you want. I just arbitrarily chose the R key as the change weapon key. It doesn't matter at all what key you want to change weapons with. Next we have the change weapon method, and this method is actually going to do a few different things. The first thing this method is going to do is run a for loop to see how many different objects we have in the current weapons array. After it finds out how many different objects are in the current weapons array, it'll check to see if current weapon is currently set to null, and if it is, it'll go ahead and set up the first object within the current weapons array as the equipped weapon on the player, and it does it by first setting that game object to active, and then once the game object is active in the scene, we can set the current weapon game object variable to that active current weapon. It'll then run a method called setAnimator, which I'll go over in more detail later this video, but that'll just make sure that the animator component knows what type of weapon you're holding, so that if you want to set up different animations for different weapon types, the animator component can know what type of weapon is equipped and play that animation. After it runs all that logic within that if statement, it'll go ahead and return out of the method here. However, if current weapon is not null when we run the change weapon method, it'll first set up whatever weapon is currently set as the current weapon to inactive, It'll then check to see if the value in the array is the current weapon, and if it is, it'll go ahead and change the value of the array to one more, but first it does a quick check to see if the value of that iteration is greater than the amount of objects within that array, then it resets the iteration value back to zero, and then regardless of what the iteration value is from there, it'll set up current weapon as whatever iteration in the current weapons array that we're currently at, as well as set up the animator component to receive that weapon's animations. Let's next take a look at the manage placement method, in order for this method to run, the player does need to have a weapon equipped, and that's what this if statement is doing. Then assuming we have a weapon equipped to the player, we set the position of that current weapon to the weapon hand position, which again, the weapon hand position is going to be whatever the player's dominant hand is, and so the current weapon's position is constantly going to be following wherever the dominant hand is, and then we do the same exact thing for the offhand, by setting the offhand position on a position found within the weapon itself, that we name as a variable called offhand placement, and so every single weapon will have its own unique offhand placement value that I'm going to show you how to set up at the end of this video. And then the last thing this method is going to do is just make sure that the current weapon's rotation also matches the dominant hand's rotation as well. 
Last, we have the set animator method, and depending on what type of weapon the player is holding, and for this tutorial I provided two different examples, a pistol weapon type and a rifle weapon type. However, you could expand this to have as many different weapon types as you would want, and maybe even different weapon types have the same different types of animations. But how this solution will work with animations is the dominant hand is going to be the only hand that actually gets animated, and for different weapon types, the dominant hand might need to be located somewhere completely different on the player, where the offhand is less important, and we'll be able to manage the offhand's animations procedurally through the code provided within our IK Manager solution. So all this set animator method is going to do is find out what type of weapon is currently equipped to the player, and then make sure that the animator component has the correct bool set up for that type of weapon. That's all the logic for this script, let me show you how we can actually make a weapon. Now I already have some sprites downloaded that I plan on using for my weapons, so I did a quick search for a pistol and a rifle, and I've imported them into this project already, just so I can show you how this next step is done. If you need to pause the video to import some sprites of weapons, go ahead and pause the video here. Once you have your weapons imported as sprites, what we want to do is select each sprite individually within the project window, and then if we take a look at the inspector window, about halfway down you should see a button that says Sprite Editor. Let's go ahead and click on that Sprite Editor button. A new Sprite Editor window should open up, and by default Unity makes the pivot point on sprites the direct center of that image. So in the middle of your image you should see this blue circle, and this blue circle is going to be the pivot point for the sprite, and what we want to do is move this pivot point to the position on the weapon wherever we want the dominant hand to rest, and for basically all guns it's going to be the trigger, so I'm going to move the pivot point to the trigger, then press the apply button at the top of the sprite editor window and close out the sprite editor window, and we need to do the same process for each different weapon, so let me do this real quickly for the other image I've imported as well. And now we need to create two different prefabs for these different weapons. Now I already created the prefabs before I started recording this episode, but I'll still quickly go over the process of how you can make a prefab in this video. To create a new weapon prefab, go ahead and right click anywhere within the hierarchy window and select create empty. Go ahead and give this empty game object a name that would make sense for whatever type of weapon it is. And then all we need to do is attach a sprite render component to this empty game object. Choose whatever image would make sense for this type of weapon. Depending on the image size, you may need to adjust the scale on the transform component for this prefab. So go ahead and pause the video here if you need some extra time to scale the prefab. We also need to add the weapon script to this prefab, which I'll briefly go over the weapon script here shortly. But first let's finish making this prefab. We also need to create an empty child game object on this prefab, and we can name this empty child game object offhand. Once you finish making the prefab within the hierarchy window, go ahead and drag it into an appropriate folder in the project window to save it as a prefab. And now let me quickly go over and explain everything within the weapon script. First thing you'll want to notice is it inherits from mono behavior, and it contains three public variables. And all of these variables do need to be public because they will be accessed by the handle weapon script that I went over earlier this video. But the first public variable is going to be an enum variable named type of weapon. And if you're not familiar with what an enum is, it's outside of the scope of this video. But real quickly, an enum is a data type that helps differentiate different types of similar objects. So depending on what type of object it is, scripts that would need to access this data type can flow a certain logic depending on what type of weapon it is. I only created two weapon types for this tutorial, pistol and rifle. However, you can go ahead and set up however many different weapon types you would plan on making for your game within this script. So within these curly brackets here, type out the name of each different type of weapon with the comma in between each name. Next we have a public weapon type variable named weapon type. And then finally we have a public transform variable named offhand placement that will go ahead and plug in that empty child game object on the weapon as the value. And that's all this script is going to do. It's actually not going to run any methods or flow any logic. So let's go back into Unity to finish setting up the weapons. Let's double click on the prefab we just made in the project window. In this drop down menu, go ahead and select whatever weapon type would make the most sense. And then for this offhand placement value, go ahead and drag the empty game object offhand into that slot. And then make sure the offhand position is located somewhere on your weapon. That would make sense for the offhand to be when the player is holding that weapon. Now if you need some additional time to set up your other weapons, go ahead and pause the video here. Let's go ahead and finish setting up the character to make sure that the weapon's position and rotation is correct, as well as add some weapons to the weapons list found on the handle weapon script. Let's first set up all the different transform components. Depending on what tool you're using for IKs, they'll probably have different setups that they use to manage the different positions of IKs. I'm using the standard IK manager developed by Unity. As of filming this video, it is available to download as an experimental package. And for each different IK Manager solver, it contains a child game object. And for the weapon hand, I chose a child game object for the right hand IK. 
whereas for the offhand IK, I chose the child game object for the left hand IK. Now for the weapon rotation, I chose bone 5 on my character, which is the same bone located for the right hand IK, or in the most layman's terms that I can come up with, bone 5 is going to equal the right arm forearm. Now for the weapon size, I went ahead and created two different weapons for this tutorial, so I'm going to plug in two here, and then for these two different elements that pop up, I'm going to plug in each different weapon prefab. Next, I want to briefly touch base on the animator component to show you how we can trigger the different animations. If you're unfamiliar with how to make animations or the animator component in general, I have a tutorial that I already uploaded to YouTube that I would definitely recommend checking out. There's a link to that tutorial in the description, or you can click on the suggested video at the top of the screen. Before I film this video, I already made two different animations for walk with pistol and walk with rifle. Both of these animations keyframes are almost identical, but one thing you'll need to take note is that you need to remove your offhand from any animation keyframes that you may have already recorded, because we're going to be procedurally animating the offhand, and if the offhand is attached to an animation, the animation will go ahead and override the procedural animation and not allow the offhand to be placed where it needs to be. So if you do want to make custom animations for different weapons, what I would do first is go ahead and copy the keyframes for that animation, delete the offhand game object from the entire animation itself, which will then delete all the keyframes that offhand is attached to, and then adjust the placement of the dominant hand for where you would want it to be for different custom animations. Now if you do want the offhand animated by the animator component while it's holding the weapon for certain animations, you can certainly do that, just don't make any weapon specific animations for those animations. You'll also need to set up bool parameters for each different custom animation, and I just went ahead and named the bool parameters rifle and pistol. You would probably want to name the bool parameter whatever the animation name is, because you're probably going to have a few different custom animations for each different weapon type. Now for the example script that I've included, I named these bool parameters rifle and pistol, so make sure you remember to go back in the handle weapon script if you need to, to change the bool parameter names to whatever you want, as well as add any different weapon type that you would need custom animations for. Go ahead and pause the video here if you need some time to set up the animator component, but assuming you have everything set up, let's go ahead and hit play and test it out. And as you can see when the scene loads, the weapon is positioned and rotated correctly, if I move around, the pivot point that we set up on the weapon will go ahead and follow around the player's dominant hand, and then as you can see the player's offhand is procedurally animated based on the position of the gun, and if I press R to change the weapon, the offhand position changes, and the different animations are pretty subtle, you probably don't notice them, but if I click on my animator component, you can see the correct animation is firing off depending on what weapon type it is. Alright, that'll go ahead and wrap it up for this video. If I was able to teach you something within this tutorial, please consider liking the video. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing as well, as I will only upload top tier proven solutions within Unity. If you were following this tutorial to make a Metroidvania style game, please consider taking a look at my course on Udemy Metroidvania Toolkit, in which I discuss in detail everything that you would need to know to make a Metroidvania style game. As of filming this video, it's one of the highest rated courses on Udemy, and if you visit my website, there's a coupon to give you a special discount for the course. That's enough self-promotion for one video. If you have a suggestion on the next tutorial for me to make, please go ahead and leave it in the comments, and I definitely appreciate you watching my video. Let me wrap up everything by saying I hope to see you in my next video. I also hope you have a great rest of your day, and take care.